Hello and welcome to What The Hey, where I'm your regular host of What The Hey, and today in What The Hey, I'm once again answering yet another question. When I go to my notebook of knowledge, I see the question of who the hey was Oliver Bullied? Now this question comes from Oliver Antonio Campus Barros, so hello to you and thank you very much for the question. Now who we're discussing today would be Oliver Bullied, who was born on September 19th of 1882 in New Zealand. Now, when kind of trying to discuss the younger years of Oliver, it's kind of hard to do so, and I really hate when this is the case with really any historical figure. Because with Oliver, there's not really that much documented about what he was doing when he was pretty young, besides the fact that he did move around quite a lot. Like, originally he was born in New Zealand, but then he ended up moving to Wales as well as to England, sometimes with both of his parents, but then sometimes just with his mom. But other than that, we don't know too much about what he was up to. However, when we get to his later years, that's when stuff actually starts to get documented. So yay for good milestones! And why I say that's pretty much a milestone is because when Oliver turned 18, he decided to take on an apprenticeship with the Great Northern Railway, so it's not really discussed as to why he did so, it's just the straight up fact that he did. And from the years of 1907 through 1909, Oliver worked as a locomotive running superintendent, as well as a test engineer, as well as an assistant works manager. So what you mainly need to know up to this point is that Oliver had a lot of association and involvement with locomotives. Once again, it's kind of hard to explain as to why that is. There's really no documents or statements from people who knew him saying, he loved locomotives, he went to the diesel works and looked at them all day. There's none of that. And after a while of actually working with locomotives, Oliver decided to take a break from 1911 through 1912 to tour Europe with other locomotive enthusiasts to kind of peruse and see different locomotive builds and engineering. One of the enthusiasts he toured around with was Sir Nigel Gresley, who I believe I've made a video on in the past, so if you want to learn about them, feel free to. So essentially through his tour, Oliver associated with people who knew a bunch about locomotives so he could know more about locomotives. There was a brief patch where Oliver had to go serve for the British Army during World War I. However, it wasn't necessarily a bad thing because he kind of helped with like the locomotive division of it. And after World War I, around the 1920s, Oliver decided to go back into being an assistant, a designer, as well as an engineer for different locomotives. But it wasn't really until the 1930s, specifically 1937, where Oliver's efforts towards locomotives were recognized because he became the chief mechanical engineer specifically for the Southern Railway. I know that there's a few different railways. There's like the LNER, there's the GNR. Is it GNER? Grand Northern Eastern Railway, something like that. But he specifically had the Southern Railway, so it was like his appointed spot. And with being the chief mechanical engineer, Oliver was basically appointed to being the person that oversaw and continued the work of development and engineering for locomotives for the Southern Railway. I know that's a lot, but basically he made sure that locomotives were being built. That's what it was. I have a little brief list of stuff that he made. Uh, here we go. He did stuff where he helped to design and build the Merchant Navy class specifics. He did the CC1 and the CC2. He helped to design the Austerity Freight Engine. He also did the Leader Steam Engine. Overall, a lot of people recognize his designs for being extremely comfortable in comparison to others. Which personally, I think is really great because sometimes it's better to be comfortable than to have something look fancy, you know? He also got a few titles, like the President of the Institution of Mechanical Engineers in 1946, as well as the Most Excellent Order of the British Empire in 1949, so people were like, bro, this dude's awesome. And of course he did eventually pass on April 25th of 1970, and a lot of people in general just really respect his career because he clearly did put a lot of time into researching and building locomotives. And I mean, I don't think he's necessarily considered to be one of the biggest engineers by a lot of like locomotive and engineering fans, but he clearly did put in a lot of work, especially since he associated and kind of familiarized himself with other engineers like Sir Nigel Gresley, so like big people in the business. So overall, in terms of my general opinion, I just think it's kind of cool to see someone who put so much time into something that they clearly cared about. Once again, I'm kind of frustrated that I don't know why he cared about it, like early in his childhood. Maybe it's one thing that just like hit him on the head one day, he was like, I like trains. 
So overall, very inventive and very interesting dude. I also appreciate his efforts around like World War I with putting stuff he was familiar with into an effective and helpful way to help the British Army. But that's essentially the answer to the question, so if you have any questions, let me know and I'll get to working on them as soon as I can, but that's about it, so thank you very much for watching. Bye!